Arnold Newman once said that photography is 1% talent and 99% moving furniture. And for architectural photography, I find that especially true. Preparation for this shoot uh, really began with a scout. Um, I went and met with a client and we actually walked around the property and I talked to the owner, the developer, the uh, interior designer, the architect, um, basically just trying to flesh out what were the key elements that they wanted to feature. Um, I had a chance to sort of get in, uh, familiar with, with the home and, and figure out what uh, visually worked and then it just came down to uh, a shot list. The most powerful light source that we've got is the sun. So we try to dictate what shots happen first and last and everything else by where the sun is. Uh, on this particular home, the backyard barbecue faces east, which of course is where the sun rises. So we were on the east side for first shot. So for this shot, we've got celebrity chef Michael Lyon coming in. He's going to be our model. We've got a very typical three-point lighting setup going on. We've got our key right here, our fill, and then our backlight in behind. The challenge that we have is that we've got this Forno oven with flames going on. Now, to capture those, we have to really slow down the shutter speed to be able to burn that into the image. Uh, it's a challenge because we've also got flash lighting, a really bright sun going on in behind us. Uh, so lots of little elements going on here. So we're set up here in the uh, sauna. I'm kind of crammed in next to our softbox, which is providing just a little bit of fill light. The neat thing about the sun is it's got these little LED lights that provide these specular highlights. Depending on our aperture, we can control the way that they look. So at, say, f22, we can create these little starlight patterns coming off of each one. But way down low at f4, it'll create this sort of soft, mushy look. So I'll show you what f4 looks like. So we're shooting f4 at uh, 1 6th of a second. So that's that one. Now I'm going to crank it up five stops to f22 and compensate by lowering my shutter speed down to five seconds. Okay, so we got our master bedroom shot, but we're kind of rushing now. We're losing our light quickly. We've got to get out and get this dusk shot. It's the signature shot for this property. We're going to be on the roof of the pool house shooting everything. We've got a full crew out there setting up lights. Uh, we've got to go quick. So for the sort of signature image of the home uh, that was going to be used on a bunch of magazine covers, uh, we set up, a, a, I think it was three or four different lights on the uh, lower uh, patio deck. Uh, I got on top of the pool house, that was sort of the best angle that we could see sort of of the pool, the home and up the lake. One other thing that we try to do with all these sort of dusk shots is to get every light on. So whether it's the pool lights, the house lights, whatever it, whatever it might be, get it on. And then as much as we can sort of maximize the reflections, uh, that helps too. So with us, I mean, obviously we have the pool, which helps, but we also uh, had two assistants take garden hoses and they wet down all of the decking in the front. And that just helped to pick up all the little lights and specular highlights that were pouring out from in the house. Bring up the master lighting. Once we were all set up and the lighting was done and everything was ready, it was the matter of basically pushing the button and that was it, we had our shot. So obviously this, this home has a lot of uh, unique features. For me, I think the biggest thing was, was the wine cellar. One of the really cool things about that wine cave is that they had just filled it with candles. I mean, there must have been dozens and dozens of candles in there. So A, I mean, there was nowhere to put a light, but B, it didn't need it. So what we did is we lit all of these candles inside this wine cave and allowed the cave to basically light itself. Uh, we just did a long exposure and it looked phenomenal. We couldn't have lit it any better. I think that we accomplished all the goals that we, we set out to uh, capture on this shoot. We certainly uh, managed to get everything that we'd laid out in the shot list. Uh, I think the shots look great. I think they're going to be a very uh, a helpful selling tool for, the, for this property. Um, you know, I come from a school of thought where you get it in camera. You don't, uh, you don't spend a lot of time in post-production. Of course, this comes back to the fact that I, I started in film, not in digital. So, uh, you know, at the end of the day, I was able to walk away from set feeling comfortable that we had what we needed and that we weren't going to have a lot of uh, headaches later on trying to accomplish different things in post-production. I think an architectural photo shoot is different from sort of other photo shoots in that 
uh, you have an opportunity to be a perfectionist. It's, it's one reason I love it. You can go in, you can set things exactly how you want them, you control the lighting, the sets, the, you know, you don't have models to deal with, there, there aren't a lot of variables. Uh, and so you can go in and basically try to capture a perfect image.